to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it. We have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to the podcast today. Today show is a big show. I have to tell you, this is such an important show for your business that I need you to hear me. This isn't your garden variety, how to do I do better on Instagram show. We all heard about the PPP, right? When COVID hit, business owners everywhere struggled, right? Even in our own industry, which ultimately thrived throughout the pan- pandemic, in that beginning, it was very uncertain. And for any of you that run larger businesses in particular with, you know, employees and staff and all the things, I know that you experienced what we did as well at Window Works. Like, how is this going to happen? What's coming next? What impact will it have on my business? And how will I keep my employees on staff or how do I let them go? Right? It was not an easy time. Okay. At Window Works, we made a decision. We were determined to keep things running. I remember Vinny specifically saying, I have not been in business for 38 years to have it go down under my watch. Like it just was like, no, (laughs) it's not happening. (laughs) Right. And so eventually a lot of growth came our way as an industry. And even that wasn't easy. Right. And I know in Window Works, we had a long period of time where we were paying installers who had absolutely nothing to install. Right. A, because we had two months where we weren't selling. Then we had another two or three months where we couldn't get the products and the goods out of the different factories because of the COVID protocols and the the delay in fabrication. And then it started happening because it was the delay in getting the parts off the ships and out of the piers and all the ports and all the things. Okay, so it was a rough time. And when the PPP came out, it felt almost a little too good to be true, right? That the government was reaching out a hand to help business owners like you and me. And it felt like a huge gift. And it felt like a little like, okay, we did this. It was hard. But here's some reward for putting our businesses, our homes, our lives on the line. Right. But I can tell you this, until six months ago, I never heard of the ERC, which is a similar government program that can give you as much, if not more, money back to you as the PPP did, right? So if you were running COVID, you were running your business in COVID, or even if you opened right as COVID hit, you need to listen to this show. You need to listen to my guest today, Shannon Lopez, all right? Shannon was a business owner when COVID hit as well. And when she stumbled upon the ERC, she set out to make it her business to understand everything she could about it. And since then, she actually started a new business called Be Better ERC Consulting to help business owners like us take advantage of what the ERC program offers. Shannon now has helped hundreds of companies receive tens of millions of dollars in refunds associated with this ERC program. And what it is, is it's the Employee Retention Credit Program. Okay. Tax season is upon us, and this is a massive opportunity to make a difference for your business. It's connected to your tax returns. You will hear it as Shannon describes it. All right. So listen to what she has to say about the employee retention credit and figure out if you need to make some phone calls either to your own CPA or possibly to Shannon. All right. Can't wait to share this interview with you. Hey, Shannon, thanks so much for joining me on the podcast today. Hi, Luann. Thanks so much for having me. 
Okay, so I have been waiting with bated breath for this interview, Shannon. And of course, the wait is created on my side. <laughs> I know that. My calendar, my schedule. Um, however, I have known um, Natasha Jones introduced us, and I have known since probably October that you were available to t- come and do this interview. But I want to share with you, Shannon, I honestly didn't recognize the importance of the topic that you wanted to talk about until I would say late November. It might have been early December. And that is because I read the topic. It's sort of like the words ERC, just like, you know, kind of melded across my mind and went, I don't know what that is. I'll figure it out when I talk to her. You were referred by Natasha. So my answer was any friend of Natasha's is a friend of mine. If Natasha thinks it's good, I think it's good. But the thing is, there was an interesting moment. I want to say it was the end of November, beginning of December, where Sarah Brennan came to me and she's in a group chat with me and a couple of other ladies. And she left us a voice boxer and she said, oh my goodness, do you guys know about this ERC thing? And she started started to explain how she had worked with your company, that Natasha had clued her in and she worked with your company and that her company got a significant amount of money back through this ERC program. And I, and she didn't know that Natasha had mentioned for you to be on the show, right? And I didn't even actually make the connection right then. And it wasn't until I went to Vin and I was talking to Vinny about this and he was like, wait, what? I don't know about this. And I said, yeah, you got to get on the horn with Frank, our CPA. And then all of a sudden I was reviewing things in my Monday.com and I was like, Now the letters ERC stood out to me, Shannon. And I was like, wait a minute. I have an ERC expert on the queue here? Like, this is literally phenomenal. So I'm super excited, Shannon, because this is such a, um, it could be such a game changer for every single interior designer's business. As a window treatment business, we were able to make it work for window works. And if and when it works for window works, it is going to be such a game changer for us. Um, But every, like the designer's businesses don't necessarily have uh, as big a hurdle as window works did because designers businesses were so dramatically affected by COVID and they're just all coming out of the whiplash of it right now as we speak. So that's a huge, huge amount of talking for me at the beginning of a podcast, but I wanted to set up how important it is that I personally feel this topic is and how grateful I am that your company exists and that you are helping interior designers and other small business owners with this. So having said that gabillion long introduction there to the show, tell us what the ERC is, and then we're going to pick it apart, Shannon, and help designers understand how and they access this for themselves. Well, thank you so very much, Luann. Also, a thanks to Natasha for seeing the importance of it and wanting to share it, even though she herself did not have, you know, W-2 employees at that point in time and Mm. not able to take advantage of it for herself, Mm. saw the importance of it for others. And so I think that um, that's just great. And I want to say thank you to both of you for seeing the importance of that. So what is the ERC? First of all, it stands for Employee Retention Credit. So right in the name, it's a program designed to credit business owners who retained employees during COVID. I'll use that with quotes, um, the Mm -hmm. during COVID, because it runs from the beginning of 2020, specifically March 13th is the earliest you could start to claim this credit. And it goes to the longest period of time is quarter four of 2021. I say that with an asterisk because that quarter alone is for new business owners only. So the majority of business owners, it spans from quarter two of 20 through quarter three of 21. That's six quarters where you could get money back for having W-2 employees, for retaining them during COVID if you qualify for this program. Okay. And so the thing is, this is the type of thing where automatically, when if I did not understand the significance now, I'd be like, well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So I get 10 bucks back, but we're not talking about 10 bucks. We're talking about significant dollars. Yeah. Let me just say this. If you know what the PPP is, if you know somebody who got the PPP, you got the PPP, you understand that that was 
impactful, significantly, probably more impactful than anything you've ever received as a business owner, whether for profit or not for profit. This program is as financially impactful, if not more than the PPP for most business owners. So what specifically am I saying? Whatever amount of money you got from the PPP, there is a good chance that you will get that much, if not more, for this program. That is the million dollar line right there. That is exactly the million dollar line. And that's exactly what Window Works has learned because we have just recently gone through the entire application process with our CPA. Vinny st- started right on it right after, I mean, literally the next day. I, I got the Voxer from Sarah, went downstairs to the living room like, Nagara, you got to listen to Sarah's Voxer. And the next day he started with our, our accountant. So it took a good six or so weeks to get through this process. Now, I don't know if that took that long because of our accountant being busy, because of any being busy, or because it, that's how long it takes. But that's what happened. But we are looking at the guesstimate of exactly what you just said, what we got from the PPP plus some. And so some businesses also just add, I know you're obviously already working through the program, but we have helped business owners who had previously submit. We give a free, you know, review of your business when, and are able to tell you almost pretty closely the exact amount we would be able to submit for you. And we have actually helped business owners su- resubmit for a substantial amount of money that was not in the original submission. And you might be asking like, well, how is that possible? Isn't it just one way? that you calculate this and submit for it. And it's it's just not that crystal clear. Um, so there are ways to maximize your refunds through this process. Okay, so I'm first in line. The, fo- the <laughs> Because you're going to get a lot of emails and calls. But Luann's first. Don't forget, I brought you here. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm sure Vin will want to do that. There's, just, there's no reason not to, right? Vin, Vin is your husband? Yes. Yeah, it's meant to be. My husband's name is Vinny. Ah, that's hysterical. <laughs> Do you also call him the Vin Man and Vincenz too? <laughs> I call him Vin and Velo because my last name is Lopez. <laughs> that's so funny. Oh, goodness. Okay, so okay, so here's the thing. If you're listening and you qualified for the PPP and you got 30000 then you could get at least 30000 if not more. If you qualify for 150000 you could get 150000 if not more. That's exactly what Shannon is talking about. So, Now, let's talk about Shannon because, you know, look, I think most of us have the ethical bone in our body, right? We have the bone that says, wait, why should I get this? You know, why, you know, is this happening and what is really the intent behind it? But when you explain it, I think most of us will recognize how hard it was to do business during COVID and the things that are the reasons for this program, it's like, oh yeah, I did do that. So talk a little bit about what is the purpose of it? What is the point of view on it? And you know, why did the government come out with it? Yeah. I just want to say, just to touch back on a point you just made, it was so hard to do business during 2020 and 2021, not just for me at the time that, you know, COVID hit, we had over a hundred employees and Whoa. to be honest, I went upstairs and I cried for yes. We were fully shut down. Yeah. Weeks. I didn't yeah. time it was going to be nine weeks, but I came downstairs and my husband told me everything was going to be okay <laughs> and that we would figure it out. Yeah. Okay. And so he really kind of just helped set me on the path of doing as much research as I possibly could. And I came across this program early on, um, actually before PPP. Wow. In March of 2020, it was rolled out. It was tucked inside something called the CARES Act which sounded like it was for pay for um, employees who were out due to having COVID. Yeah. But this program, it came out in response to governments starting to make orders that were suspending business. The first reason listed that you can qualify for this program. Problem is that PPP came out and PPP, you could get up to 100% of your wages covered for about a two and a half week, two and a half month period of time. Mm-hmm. Just say 10 weeks of wages. That's what it was designed to cover. Right. And you could do it 100%. Right. The ERC originally, when it came out, you could get back to 50% of wages up to $5,000 per employee. Mm. On the face of it, it seemed like the PPP would be better. Right. Right. And initially, you could only do one, you couldn't do both. And that 
kind of really bothered me from the beginning because I was like, why not? Well, why can't you? They're different mm -hmm. programs, right? Right, right. And so what happened was when round two PPP was announced, December 27th of 2020, I had already known about this program and was trying to find help from people, you know, to just keep telling me you couldn't do it. I wanted to find somebody to say that you could and why. <laughs> um, and December 27th, when round two PPP was announced, I mean, nobody could believe that. It right. was the most impactful program that ever at least helped me as a business owner. They were doing it again, you know? Mm -hmm. And in that same statement, they said that they were going to roll out essentially ERC round two, but amend ERC for 2021 was originally just for 20. And you could do both programs. Wow. It was going to be retroactive. So right then and there, it was like the one program PPP. It was like you had four opportunities now. It, wow. It just completely was mind blowing. And when they rolled it out for 2021, they made it even better because it was underutilized in 20. Obviously, nobody had heard of it or used it. In 2021, you could get up to $7,000 back per employee mm. per quarter. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, right. Program that originally could get you $5,000 max, max per employee in 2020, could now get you up to, originally in 2021, you could do all four quarters. So another 28000 Well, the program got amended again. They took that quarter four back for existing business, and they left it for new business owners only. So three quarters at 7000 that's $21,000, and one year at 5000 you could get up to $26,000 back per employee. And wow. we do have some businesses that were able to get those maximum amounts per employee, right. right? I would say in most cases, don't just count the number of employees you had and multiply it by 26,000. That's the max, right? Right, right, right. But you can see now, you know, let's just take somebody who has 10 employees. Right. You're looking at, you know, potentially somewhere around $200,000. Exactly. That's like what window works is. Yeah. And the thing is, you know, from from when we go back to that summer um, of 2020, all the way through the summer and fall of 2021, you know, I specifically had to come back into Window Works practically on a full time basis at that point because we were like so many businesses. Like, like here's the thing. Here's what happened with interior designers. They literally couldn't fulfill their orders because of the pipeline problems, the 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 supply chain problems. Like, literally, would place orders for hundreds of thousands of dollars and couldn't fulfill them. So therefore people stopped placing orders, but they still had their design team in place or whatever. With window works, what was happening was we were, clients were still placing orders, but products like in New Jersey, you would normally order an awning and depending on its level of complexity would be delivered in three weeks to eight weeks on the most complex awning. Now the simplest awnings were coming in for delivery at 12 and 14 and the complex ones coming in at 24 and 30. OK, I mean, New Jersey's only hot for 12 weeks of the year. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like you're looking at somebody going, yeah, why don't you give me this order for eighty five thousand dollars for this complex awning in, you know, April and I'll bring here. I'll be back at Christmas with it. Right. And so and the thing is, though, we were keeping our installers on the payroll. And that is the rub, because these are qualified men that you just don't pick up on the corner anywhere. And if we let them go because we were sitting there with no work because we weren't getting deliveries, we, when we finally would get deliveries, we'd be beat. But that was a very, very difficult period of time for the management team to manage the cash flow. And the, forget the customers, you know, the customer conversations I complained about like ad nauseum on the podcast, right? But lo us looking at our, all the sets of eyeballs going, we need all these installers soon, right? Soon we're going to need them. <laughs> like, And so that's what this is basically saying. If you're a business that kept your people working, despite whatever chess game you were trying to play as an owner, here's your, you know, payback for that. Right, Shannon? I think you bring up, you know, two really good points in this part of the conversation. First of all, you kept your employees on, right? And uh, unlike the PPP, you, they didn't have to be necessarily the same. You could have gone down from 15 to 12, or you could have gone up from six to eight, whatever, you know, whatever W2 employees that you had and you kept on, 
you can potentially qualify for this credit. Here's the truth, right? What would it have happened if you didn't keep them on? Oh, yeah. Good chance that the government was going to be paying for their income one way or another. Good point. Yep. So the, the government wants the employers to keep the employees on and they're going to pay one way or another, in my opinion, this is my personal opinion. So why not help the business owners keep them on? Right. It would have been more helpful if we had the funds at the time, um, because like you said, it was a cash flow, just, Nightmare. I call it COVID fatigue. Like I yes. was focused on my actual business anymore. Right. Just focused on how to keep it <laughs> financially open and it's who knew true. what was going to happen next month, you know? Right, right. right. Uh, I think that's a really important point you bring up. One other point I want to uh, just highlight, and this is a, a lots of different businesses experience this. When you have a business where you are building out a uh, business for the future, right? You could have the best sales ever in quarter two of 20 because you were growing in 19 and then you had all these things come to fruition in quarter two of 20 that it, it was already done. It was already laid out. There were just some finishing things that needed to be done. Right. Right. And you have this business for quarter three that was already kind of in play. And so what ends up happening is you have kind of a, a leg in the impact. Mm -hmm. So then what happened to some businesses where they didn't qualify for round two of PPP because they look like they did great through COVID. Right. But the truth is underneath that top number where a lot of other things were going on, like you touched on, Maybe, yep, we were doing that, but our profits were Ugh. not as high as they used to be. There was yep. more going on. And so to focus just strictly on sales doesn't tell the whole picture. No, it's I, I'm, I've said it to people uh, on the show and in person, the two, the, the, the concentrated two years, all of 20 and all of 21 were the two most difficult years in business out of 40 years of running a business with my husband, two most difficult years by far, not even holds a candle like no other. We went through multiple recessions, 9-11, 13 miles from New York City, went through multiple things. And nothing comes close to what it was like to run a business at, at that period of time, especially, you know, I think it was difficult for all of us, but window works had grown to like maybe a 10 or a 12 person team. Like we've been up to 21 and then down to five and then back to seven. We were probably about a 10 person team within six months. We needed to be a, like a 14 person team. And then another six months later, we had to add two more people. And so it was this, really hurry up and wait, like get installers trained because this stuff is going to have, this stuff is going to hit. Somebody needs to how to put it up. You can't sell an $80,000, you know, awning structure and be looking at people that have had like a minute experience. It was like, Oh my God, Oh my God. Right. And it was just absolutely bonkers on every level. And so, yeah. And I love that, um, mention there, Shannon, because everybody really was, I mean, look, the restaurant industry d genuinely had to lay off and, and lost their businesses, right? So all of those workers needed that unemployment insurance. But to, and that's to your point, if we had laid off, if I had, if Sarah Brennan had, if you had, they would have been covered by the government. But I hear what you're saying. Not only is it more productive for everybody to be able to get up to go to work and have a job than be given money, right, just from your individual psyche standpoint, but also as a business owner, I'm more likely in the next crisis to push and gut through it, knowing that maybe something like this would happen you know, like the government, like knowing that there's a philosophy of keep them working as opposed to just paying out the, the money, right? Yeah. And I've been in business, you know, not, not quite that same length of time, but we did go through the housing crisis in 2007, 2008. We were a new business at that point mm. in my history in being in, you know, a small business or a small business owner, I have never ever experienced a level of government support like this. And right. it really was the first time in my life that I was just amazed that, you know, I, I wasn't going to get left holding the bag. You know, they, the government was here to support me through the most challenging time that I had ever been through. And, um, you know, we, like I said, we had all of those employees at that time. And as an employer CFO of my companies, I always viewed my 
number one responsibility was to make sure that my employees had their paycheck when their paycheck was due and do everything in my power to help them grow financially. Right, right. So when, you know, we're told that we have to shut down for nine weeks and all the stories I've heard from so many other business owners, you know, there was not going to be a way that we could do that as business <laughs> owners on our own. We right. needed the help. And, oh, yeah. you know, the government really did come through with this program. Unfortunately, you know, so many people, most people n- never heard of it. Don't know about it. <laughs> It's like, hello, 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 hello. (laughs) No, I mean, I'm going to ask you about that in a second. And I just want to just tie that other sentence up. You know, I remember like the day this happened, of course, we all remember it's like a JFK moment, you know, or whatever moment, like you guys are too young for the JFK. I'm actually too young for the JFK moment. How about that? (laughs) Um, But it's one of those moments. You remember it, right? And the thing is, I can remember we immediately, me, Vin and Bill were the ownership team at the time. And we immediately went into, we need to have a meeting, like the three of us, like, what are we going to do? And then I invited my cousin Eileen Hahn into the meeting because she has coached us often off and on over the years. And we had a standing meeting every Saturday for like nine or 10 weeks, starting that first Saturday after the shutdown with Eileen. And I remember by the first, the, in the very first meeting with Eileen, the number one critical thing that she asked us to consider was what were our non-negotiables? And we like looked at her and we're like, the sky is falling. Like, what are we talking about here? And she said, well, I think that the three of you as owners need to decide. One of you might be inclined to go in on Monday and lay the entire team off and see what happens. One of you might have a different thought. And the thing is, everything we decide and everything we do needs to stem from the number one non-negotiable that you guys have, and you're going to have to agree on it, or we're all going to be spinning our wheels every Saturday. And Vinny said, well, I'm going to tell you right now, um, I don't want to lay a single employee off. And I remember I just looked at him and I looked at Billy and Billy looked at me and we looked at Vinny and he just said, no, he goes, no, I, he goes, here's my two non-negotiables. We don't lay a single employee off and this business doesn't go under. We have been building this business since 1981. It does not go under. And I was just like, that's it. And it was like, and the thing was, I have to tell you, in Saturday after Saturday, when we would get down a rabbit hole debating, should we this or should we that, the number of times that Eileen roped us back to, does this support vision one, no employee layoff, vision two, the business survives. And we'd be like, oh, yeah, no. Okay. Stop, stop talking about it. Like it was, you always have to know your why you have to know what you will do and what you will not do. And the thing is, we didn't know one week into the pandemic that the PPP was going to come along or three years later that the ERC was going to come along. And so to your point, uh, we've also never been involved in any type of assistance to the government from the government at this level. But it worked out for us that we had a, a vision for it. And then we got the reward after the fact, basically, is what I'm saying, you know? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Our non-negotiables were the same. I just, you know, kept with it's my responsibility to yep. have a paycheck for them and have it be what they make. Yep. I didn't know how I was going to do that. You know, I talked to my partner and and she and I agreed. We heard of these programs and you know, they, they're printed. And so they're going to have to, they're going to have to hold up to what they say that they're for. And (laughs) lo lo and behold, they did. And we were able to, you know, keep all of our employees on and keep them fully paid. And I will say not everybody was able to do that. And that's okay too. Right. And it also might, didn't need to be your decision to do that. You know what I mean? That's the thing. It's personal. Yep. And even if you did lay people off and then you were able to bring them back at some point that, you know, that's not a decider if you qualify or not. You know, there's a, there's a couple of very black and white deciders, but if you laid somebody off or multiple people, like that does not change things for you for this program. Right. I love that. I love that. And I, I'm so glad you brought that up because 
I'm very big component of know your why, know what you will do and know what you won't do. But it doesn't mean listen to somebody else's and adopt it. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like you need to be true to yourself and what you can manage. You know, I know that we had advantage that there was three owners and basically the three owners went off payroll for six weeks so that we could keep that promise. You know what I'm saying? But again, it's a, it's a, it's a mature business. I'm not 25 or 30 with three little kids and, you know, a mortgage and all that stuff. Stuff. So there's all the variables that go into what time, you know, if your employees were, you know, younger starting, employees, that's the thing they were going to get paid more on unemployment. That's the other thing. Can you compete with that as a business owner who's going to try to pay them, but they're going to get more, <laughs> more on unemployment? Exactly. There were so many challenges, but also so much government support. Yes. So, so let's get to the nitty gritty. So we understand that basically our, I know what you mentioned that there's many different, like, you know, qualifiers and disqualifiers. So to go through all of it probably isn't logical, but are there three, four, one, two things that you can say, if you're listening and this then you should at least either speak to your own CPA or come and, you know, speak to us and hire us. So what are, what are we, who should be paying attention? Okay. So I guess right off the bat, this program is for business owners, nonprofit and for-profit. Okay. That have W2 employees. All right. If you have a business that had 1099 employees, this program is not for you. It's for W-2 employees. Okay. And if I had to, you know, surmise why, well, to, the program is ran through the IRS and the 941 generates the refund. So if you don't have a 941, the, the refund cannot be generated. Okay. So it's a W-2 employee program. It's for businesses as small as one employee. And I want to make this point clear because there is a lot out there that may suggest you have to have a minimum of 10 employees or five employees, and that's just completely not true. In my opinion, it's because, you know, possibly there's not uh, enough to help somebody with one employee. So we don't do that. Um, the program is for as low as one employee and as much as 500 full-time equivalent employees, which we'll just put an asterisk by that because there's tests to run for the number of equivalent employees. Um, in 20, it was for businesses under 100 employees, but then when they amended it, they amended it to include larger, larger small businesses, I guess, with mm. 500 employees. Okay. And just for clarification, if you're a sub S corp and you're an employee of your own company, but you're the only employee, that probably seems like not logical, right? Yep. So there are some uh, nuances about related parties that are important to know, um, but it's probably too much to get way into the nitty gritty. Yeah. Here's a fair thing. If you own more than 50% of your company and you're your only employee, then those wages would not be considered. Right. Right. If the only employees you have are related to you in a relative structure that the IRS views as related, <laughs> Your kids or your husband <laughs> would also be disqualified. It's when you own 50% or less that you can start to consider those wages. Okay. Okay. So, and so really though, if we're an interior design firm and we have one W-2 employee, we should at least say, huh, maybe I should look into what the next criteria and qualifiers are, right? Yeah, because like we talked about before, you know, there's a potential for getting a refund up to a maximum amount of $26,000. Right. If you, you know, if somebody was going to hand you $6,000, would you stick it in your pocket? Yes, I would, ma'am. <laughs> and, and then I would pound it right on marketing. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, so basically you have to have a W2 employee, at least one. And what, what are some of the other high levels so that somebody listening can say worth my time? I got to reach out. Um, well, essentially there's two ways that you can qualify for the program. Okay. For an existing business. What do I mean by that? A business that was in business prior to February 15th of 2020. So if you were an existing business before COVID hit, then there's two ways you can qualify. There's also a way that if you're a new business, you can. We'll talk about that later. So for most existing businesses, essentially, 
if your sales were impacted, there's a pretty much black and white test for that. I say pretty much because again, the way that it's written is a little bit confusing and we've helped many clients who did miss some things with that test. So um, if your sales were impacted to the degree that the IRS says qualifies, you qualify. Okay. And then the other way, which is actually the first way listed, it's called a suspension of business. Suspension of business doesn't lay out a black and white test like they do for sales, which they call gross receipts decline. We call it sales testing. Um, they don't lay out a black and white test. And so I think this is part of the whole ambiguity behind the program or kind of uncertainty or things that are said that aren't exactly true. But this suspension of business, it says this, if your business operations were suspended fully or partially due to a government order and that order was placed on a nominal portion of your business, then you can qualify for these refunds. Okay. So what does that mean? Right? <laughs> As a business owner who lived through COVID, I think you have a pretty good gut reaction to if your business operations experienced some sort of suspension due to government orders, you're probably on the phone, you know, with the health department or your governor's office or your city office trying to understand how the heck to run your business with things that were being said that you had to change, right? Right. And so I think you have a kind of gut reaction as a business owner if you feel like, oh, I think that might be me. Mm. But there's things like, well, what exactly does that mean? The word nominal? Okay, well, what does that mean? Well, the IRS later defined that to mean 10%. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So essentially 10% is not that much of your business, right? It's right. portion. It's just 10%. So what this is saying is that if, you know, a government order were placed on even 10% of your business, which could be your clients, could be your revenue, could be your capacity, could be all sorts of things, right? On 10% of your business, then you could, you know, potentially qualify for these refunds for that period of time. So we're not looking for, you know, this 90% effect. It's just saying, hey, the government came in, they, they made some uh, requirements. And if that requirement impacted your business, suspended your business even partially, then you could qualify for the period of time that this happened. And what we're saying about that, just so I can see if I'm understanding it, is to use an actual example. If 10% of your products ordered. So if you're an interior design firm and you would typically spend a million dollars on furnishings and lighting and carpeting and all of that stuff, and only even if just 10% of it could not be delivered in a timely manner, like because of the shipping being, you know, closed down from overseas to here because of the ports being closed down because of whatever it is. That's what you're talking about. That's like panned up. You were affected. Is that what you mean? So you're, you're speaking specifically of supply chain issues right now. Right. I would guide anybody if they're like, Hmm, you know, I, I want to learn a little bit more about this. I want to look into it. I would say to look at irs.gov. Okay. Where we kind of looked as our only go-to resource, we would read other sites, you know, but then we'd go back to irs.gov and see if what we read, if we could find it and if it held water. So irs.gov does give lots of examples of partial suspension. Obviously, it's not an exhaustive list because there's just numerous businesses and there's numerous 50 different states and all different cities and all different impacts that could have happened to business. But they do give some good examples to help you then kind of extract that back to your business. Okay. So what I would say specifically to your question is if you know, if you were like, well, we had problems with all sorts of supply issues. Well, let's see if we can narrow it down to something that's nominal, right? That we can just laser focus on. For instance, let's say you have um, these special cabinets that are custom and they're made by, you know, this one vendor and you can't get cabinets like this anywhere else. Okay. And so we look at that and say, okay, well, were these cabinets a nominal portion of your business? You know, like, well, yeah, I mean, it's 30% of our business, right? Mm. This is what we were known for, these special cabinets. Okay, well, tell me about it kind of prior to COVID. We already kind of have that nominal test, right? Mm -hmm. Then I would say add documentation to support that nominal test. Well, here, it's easy. We can show that the cabinet sales, you know, in 2019 were 32% of our business. Okay, great. So then what happened with the cabinets in 2020, right? 
Well, we were not able to get the cabinets. We used to get them in, you know, two to three weeks. And now it's taking, you know, 18 to 20 weeks to get the cabinets. Okay. And how do you feel that impacted your business? You know, there'd be some sort of narrative commentary that you'd share. Okay. I'd say, save all of that information. The key is, is the reason that the cabinets went from two to three weeks to 18 to 20 weeks, is that somehow tied to a government order? Mm. Okay. And so that's where the business owner might not really know. Right. And so that's where we would offer some guidance or some help. First of all, the cabinets may be in your state or they may come from a different state. Right. So what we've done is we've partnered with um, not just kind of the accounting side to help with that, but also the legal side to help us, you know, interpret government orders from wherever our clients are. You know, we were doing our best as business owners to interpret the government orders to be able to run our business. But at this point, when you're going to start to request, you know, tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars, we want to kind of up that a little bit and say, hey, I'd like to know every government order in this area. And I'd like to know what the restrictive language was on business and see if I can somehow tie that delay to a government order. So I'll give you an example of where we feel more confidence in being able to make that direct connection, right? You had made okay. a comment about things coming from overseas. Right. All right. Well, let's say that the production is somewhere not in the United States and those businesses are under their own government orders. That doesn't matter because that's not the United States. Okay. What matters is the United States government order. Well, once they hit the port, were they just releasing those goods from the port and there was no problem with the distribution from there? No, that's not what that's not what happened. Right. There were lots of holdups at the port and those holdups were under government order, right? Quarantine periods, social distancing requirements. And so we feel that, you know, anytime we're looking at a nominal impact to your business, we're trying to see, does that nominal impact tie back to a government order to the best of our ability? The problem is, you know, there's going to be nobody at the IRS that's going to tell you yes or no right now. Mm. And so you have to make a decision as a business owner if you feel that based on how the IRS, you know, laid out this qualification, we just go back simply to, you know, was my business partially suspended due to a government order placed on a nominal portion of my business? If I feel like I can check those three boxes, then I feel like this program was for me because that's how it's written. Okay. And you know, without knowing each designer's individual business, this is pretty much, and by the way, I'm, you know, window treatment professionals as well. I just realized that, you know, it's both ends. Of course, I've been sharing the window works experience, but, you know, most of us are going, are sitting here saying yes, yes, and yes. Right. I mean, that's just the truth of it. Yeah. You live yeah. through that as a business owner. You yeah. Know that it, regardless if your sales increase, like it was incredibly challenging to run your business. And I guarantee every aspect of your business did not increase. Right. 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 The problems increased just as much as the revenues. <laughs> Okay. So, so I love that. So a lot of us can find ourselves in those opening criterias, right? Now, if someone is interested in taking next steps, of course they can do what we did. We went to our CPA and he was pretty knowledgeable and he walked us through the process and the thing. And then even for those of us that have already done this with our CPA, you're offering the free, basically the audit review of what our CPA has done. But you also, this is what your company specializes in now. So talk to us about what it is to work with you. What's the process? How would we do it? What should we expect? Do we have to come like, for instance, with X amount of information or just come to a discovery call? Like how's the process, Shannon? You can come to us directly through our website at www.bebetterercconsulting.com. Got it. Okay. Be better. ERC consulting.com. And of course I'm going to have this in the show notes, but you know, some people are going to be Googling it while we're talking. <laughs> so go ahead. You click right on the website. Um, and I think to start it's, you know, six simple questions. Think back to like, do you, did you have W2 employees? Were you in business? And then that kind of generates, um, a starting point for you at which point we would contact you and explain, you know, the program to you and working with us in about a 15 minute call and send you a link to be a secured link to be able to share business information so that we're able to give you a free estimate. 
Okay. And so so the thing is, we've got two stops that are in our, what I, what in my brain is exploratory and noncommittal. I'm going to fill out a, a questionnaire where I'm going to start to think, okay, yes, I'm, I, this looks like I might qualify because I'm getting all the answers here or seem to be falling in. And then there is also the opportunity for the phone call with you. And this is all before I have to pull a trigger on anything. Correct. Okay. And then once say, you know, say I love everything and you feel like the person for me and I want to have you do this, do I, will I need to also like, will I need to connect you with my CPA or my payroll company? Um, you know, is that a part of it or you're going to work outside of them? How does that work, Shannon? So we work as inclusively or exclusively as you would like. We've worked with PEOs. Um, we've worked with accountants. We've talked with lawyers. We've worked just directly with the business owner, worked with ADP, et cetera. Um, and in fact, for some accountants, we're actually, you know, just their partner ERC consulting company. So we help with all of their clients. Um, I, I would say that absolutely, you know, go to your accountant. That's what you've hired this person to be an advisor for. I would also just warn that your accountant may not be the expert in ERC. It right. didn't exist before 2020. From what I've heard, it's been nonstop tax season for accountants since 2020. Mm. Um, and doing this program, it does require you to amend your taxes, right? Okay. okay. And so we can talk a little bit more about that. But the point I want to make is that, you know, be prepared for anything your accountant could say. I guess what I would have you be asking yourself is, why hasn't my accountant brought this to me? Mm -hmm. If my accountant brought this to me, they probably know quite a bit about this program. Right. right. If my accountant didn't bring this to me. You know, why is that? Maybe they don't know. Maybe they're not, you know, equipped to do it. Maybe they're too busy. Who knows? You can ask your accountant about the program, but be prepared that the conversation may not sound exactly like today's podcast. Understood. And I will say, I mean, we adore Frank. Frank and Vinny went to high school together, you know, <laughs> saying a heck of a lot how long they've been together. Um, but even I want to say his first reaction was, you know, I'm not so sure, Vin, that that's a program for you. And then when I told him the couple of the spins and the different tidbits that Sarah had said, he went back to Frank and Frank was like, oh, OK, I can work with that. Let me go look into it. So to the to your point that, you know, the CPA may or may not be truly um, knowledgeable on the entire thing. But if you have a good CPA, once you put their back against the wall on it and say, hey, no, go look into it again, like ours, you know, they should step up to the plate. Okay. You used to have a conversation. Yes. Like I said, we've had conversations with dozens of CPAs, some that would like to be more involved in the process and some that would like to, you know, be less or not involved in the process. Right. Where they just supply the information and the records and the different things that you need in order to go through the whole process with the business owner. Right. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And then uh, pricing. You mentioned to me that it's a percentage of the money that we are awarded. Uh, that's that's the really not the way to say it, awarded. <laughs> that is just... That, I basically say it like this. This is your money. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you claim it. Right. That's what I'm saying. We're not awarded it. We're getting it back. You need to claim the refund in order to get it. If you don't claim it, then you don't get it. So after you've kind of submit and we look at your file, in most cases, we're able to give um, an estimate at that point. If we feel kind of like you said with Frank, like, well, I didn't really see how you might qualify. You didn't make this test or that test. Then we would have a conversation first, make sure we fully go over the partial suspension and see if we feel that that's a road for the client. So then once it's kind of decided, okay, you qualify for this program. We believe you qualify for this program. You believe you qualify for this program. Then, and you choose to work with us, then you pay $1,500 down. Okay. okay. And that basically starts the process of make sure that we get all of our 941s amended, make sure that we get the exact amount determined. We give you an estimate that's usually pretty close with the 90 to 95% of your refund amount, mm -hmm. but then we get the exact number. Right. And then we talk about, OK, what happens next? And we get everything submitted to the IRS. At the time we submit to the IRS, our fees are 15 percent of your refund. If your refund goes over one hundred thousand dollars, then it drops down to 10. OK. And you pay half down at the time of submitting and half when you receive your um, refunds. 
I'll say that with a caveat that we do um, extend terms to business owners that need different terms. And it's just a conversation that we have with them at the time. The 50 50 is just our standard. Okay. And so what you're saying, if I caught that correctly, okay, we have $1,500 once we decide to work with you. Then once you actually go through all the thing and you come to the amount of the refund, then if it's under a hundred thousand, our fee is an additional 15% of that refund. If it's over a hundred thousand dollars that the company expects to get out, get back, then it's 10%. And at that point, so Okay, here I am with numbers. So if it's a hundred thousand, it's ten percent. Let's call it a hundred, you know, one thousand, whatever. So that's ten thousand dollars. That's what I'm asking you. <laughs> like the worst. It, it's fifteen percent on the first hundred thousand. So it's fifteen thousand dollars. Okay. And the refund is two hundred thousand. That next hundred thousand, it drops to ten percent. Okay. Okay. So let okay. Let's so say my you know, fee for you is (laughs) $15,000. So when you file, we're paying you 7,500. And when we receive the money, we're giving you the other 7,500. Is that what you said? Yep. That would be our standard structure. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if terms are, you know, needed, then we just, we pretty much just work with every business owner to help them get submitted. Some people cannot, you know, Okay, yeah, pay that up front, and so we just we just work with the business owner. Okay, okay. So, so here's my question: It sounds like to me that once you get to the point that you've done the work on the company's, you know, financial reports and so forth, and you're submitting the refund to the IRS, that you're you must be 100 percent sure that the company is getting this money. Otherwise you wouldn't have your structure where we're a paying you um, based on it and B you're waiting for the the back end of your money when we get it. Is that, I mean, is this like a done deal once you've done the paperwork? Yeah. So what I would say is we get to uh, as close as a hundred percent as possible, right? Nobody ever wants to say a hundred percent because you can't plan for the unplanned. So I would say as close to a hundred percent as possible, but what we do is we just give a hundred percent guarantee. Okay. So we are taking a fee on your refunds and your refunds are guaranteed in that if for whatever reason, at any point in time, the IRS is to deem certain wages, certain refunds unqualified, we would refund our fee associated with those refunds. Wow. (laughs) Okay. You know, that's like one of those, you know, the best kind of deals, the kind you can't say no to. (laughs) I have to be able to sleep at night too, right? Like I'm not going to feel okay sleeping if I got paid for something that you didn't get paid for. Right, 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 right. I love it. I love it. Shannon, this is a remarkable program. I think that, you know, the last and final question that is kind of just on my mind is why was it that the PPP, everybody talked about it. It was in the news and it was on, you know, the internet and all of the business owners were talking about it. But why are we all not running around screaming about the ERC? Like, what is the deal? Okay, this this would just be a speculation at this point because it's a question I've asked myself, you know, for the past two years as I've been screaming on every corner to everybody I know <laughs> that they have to look into this program. Um I think that it was rolled out with good intention. I think that, you know, the gateway for how to get the money was not as clear as the PPP, right? Everybody could go to their bank and their bank was helping them. With the ERC, I mean, I had to research many different accountants to find somebody who could even talk about it. And when I talked to different accountants, I was given different answers. There just wasn't that same gateway that there was for the PPP. That's Mm. one reason. Another Mm. reason, originally you couldn't do both programs. So right out of the gate, it just went dark for a long period of time. Right. And then I think the other reason is that there is a little bit of ambiguity around if you qualify or not. And who wants to submit something to the IRS with ambiguity or who wants to tell somebody else to do that, right? right? And so I think at least at the accountant level, you know, the business owner level, there's a little bit of hesitant- hesitancy to share that, um, but it has to be shared, right? Because mm-hmm. it's just so financially impactful. Mm-hmm. It has to be shared. And so I think it takes someone, you know, like you, who's also a business owner 
to realize, wait a minute, this, <laughs> we have some on our hands here. I don't care if my peers aren't talking about it or, you know, it hasn't been talked about in X, Y, or Z yet. I recognize the importance of it and I'm going to talk about it. Yeah, no, it is. I know, I know that it is so incredibly important. And I think it's, I think we're really lucky that um, we have somebody like you that really understands it and has spent the last two and a half years pivoting her business in order to become expert at this and to offer these services because you know, it, it it is clear. A, it's not talked about enough. B, to your point, it's a little bit like, wait, what's going on? I don't really understand it. And then if C, my accountant isn't talking about it or doesn't really understand it, it does feel like, oh, whatever. You know what it feels like? I remember it almost felt like like the lottery, right? Like even like to your point with the PPP, when it first was out, I had Jerry Detweiler on and she's, and we'll put the link in the show notes to her episode. And she came on and she described the PPP. And it was sort of because to your point also that nothing in our, our adult life ever prepared us for the government helping out in such a massive way. So it was like, really? Come on, we're going to do 9,000 hours of paperwork and then they're going to say no. It was almost like, let me buy a lottery ticket. Maybe I'll be lucky. But then when I talked to Jerry and Peter Lang, our designer CPA, and they were like, no, 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 no go do this. I was like going to Vin, like they said, no, 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 go do this. Right. And then you do it and then it works. And you're just like, holy cow, like we can breathe and we can think and we can, you know, keep these employees and I can go back on payroll. What's going to happen? Right. So, you know, this same thing is happening again, but we don't have all of the conversation out amongst us. And so I'm so grateful for you, Shannon, um, coming on and putting your hand up and saying, I know about this. Let me tell you, because I do know that this is, can be a huge game changer. Like you said, anyone, if you're a small business owner, you have one employee and you get a check for $26,000, come on. Right. Or if you're a bigger business, you get a check for $200,000. I mean, what are we talking about here? This, why are we still talking, right? It's like, go fill out the questionnaire. So. Well, and you know, as unbelievable as, as it is, you're, you're going to hear your number and then you're not going to believe it. And then it's going to take, you know, months for the IRS to complete it on average three to six months. Then you're going to go to your mailbox one day and all these checks are going to be in there and you're going to be looking at them and you're just not going to believe them. Checks that have five digits before a decimal point, multiple right. checks. It's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. And you're going to cash it in the bank and then maybe sometime a week or two later, you'll believe that this actually happened because yeah. it really, truly is just, it really, truly is unbelievable. And Shannon, one last question. It's rolling out. So like business owners that applied six months ago, like how, what's the, what's the lag time in getting the money? Like, you know, are people already have gotten it and it's rolling as you do it? Yeah. So I would say that varies. I think it varies depending upon probably the IRS workload at the time. Mm. Um, the quickest that our business owners have received refunds back is like 90 days. Mm. Um, but on average, it takes closer to like five months. And okay. in some cases it can take, you know, nine months or longer. I have heard with um, the clients that we work with that have PEOs, for them, the process is even longer. What is a PEO, Shannon? Don't mind my ignorance. Sorry about that. It's a professional employment organization. Essentially, you get grouped with other businesses and this company submits on behalf of all of the businesses oh. the 941. Your taxes go all together on a report to the government. And so now if somebody wants to claim the ARC, it's already been part of a joint submission. The PEO has to amend their submission. Oh, I've, I've never, never heard, heard of them. What, what kind of businesses, businesses all go and do, do their, their tax returns, returns together? together? Um, well, yeah, the PEO is technically the the EIN company that submits uh -huh. and then they list the businesses underneath. Oh, so is that like, like if like one business owned all the businesses that I own, you mean like, like owned window works owned TCSN and Luann, Luann Nigara Inc. owned exciting windows? Pendant smaller businesses are under the umbrella of a larger, they just kind of group together with this PEO and then the PEO handles all oh. of kind of the payroll you know, submissions, that sort of thing for that. Oh, that sounds like a whole nother podcast because I'm, <laughs> okay, I'll let it go right there. <laughs> Probably not many of us are in PEOs, right? <laughs>
acronyms in the past 18 months that I did not. <laughs> right. Okay. All righty. Well, um, we will put the links in the show notes again, how to reach Shannon. And I highly suggest that you do reach out to her, do the questionnaire at the very least. Okay. So Shannon, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. This was outstanding. Yes. Thanks, Luann. And I do have just one other thing that I'd like to leave your listeners with. Sure. Um, because we didn't, we didn't come across this, uh, but in our talk anyways, this program unbelievably is still for business owners. Even if you had to close your business, if your business <sighs> is no longer like oh. COVID was so bad, it took me down. I had to close my business. You can still claim these refunds. I mean, some of my favorite stories of clients that I've worked with are people that went into early retirement and this just isn't what they saw for themselves. And now all of a sudden it's like they have this retirement that they envisioned wow. because they could claim these refunds. If you sold your business or you bought a business, it, the refunds transfer with the EIN. So whoever has that EIN, right? So really, no matter what, I would say, look into it. And if you're a new business, like you had the unfortunate timing of opening, let's say March of 2020. Yeah. This program is automatically for you, you know, if your Whoa. sales are under a million dollars, which most new businesses aren't going to hit the million dollar mark in the middle of COVID for half a year. Right, right, right. So wow. there's, there's lots of caveats. I would say if you were ever, you know, going to kind of get what you pay for or choose to work with an expert on something, I would say this is the, this is the time to do it because it's just kind of too costly not to. Right. A hundred percent agree. That is outstanding. Wow. That was, thank you. <laughs> we didn't cover that and it would never have occurred to me that it would be available for somebody. Cause I know personally, lots of people who just said, you know what, this is just, I was five years away, three years away from retiring anyway. See you. Bye. <laughs> and like, I'm not doing this restaurant in your neighborhood, right? Yes. We drove down the street one day in early 21 and it was closed. That's right. That was the biggest area that we saw it in the, in the local restaurants that we used to patronize. We're like, they're gone, you know? So, oh my goodness. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. I appreciate it so much. Yep, absolutely. Thank you, Luann. Hey, oh my gosh, right? This could be a game changer. Am I right? Okay. Now, here's the thing. I want to just say, taking us back, I remember for us personally, Vin and me and Billy thinking, if we don't get this PPP money, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We have been paying, we've been committing, we've been keeping doors open. What's going to happen? Okay. And the thing is that this is different, right? This is like looking back and going, we did that and we stayed up. You know, one time somebody said something to me. My father was sick. Uh, it's going back 25 years ago. He was sick and he was in an induced coma for 19 weeks. And then he ended up being in the hospital another seven weeks. And I remember when him and I had a conversation when he was on his recovery, about maybe a month after out of being out of the hospital and everything. And he said something to me that he didn't mean anything by it. He didn't mean it to be flip or to underestimate what it was. I was flying literally to Florida pretty much every Friday and coming back every Monday for four or five months um, and dealing with every time I went, they told me he was going to die. Literally every time. Yeah, no, he's still in the coma. He's probably going to die. Like it was like that gruesome and disgusting, actually. <laughs> um, like he was septic by the fifth day he was in the hospital and he survived. I mean, he lived and he's lived another 20 years, right? But the thing was that... When he had that sentence, and I remember saying it to someone, and you know me, Vinny calls me the Tin Man. I'm not overly emotional. I'm not overly like, this is crazy. But they said to me, you know, it was like you stood with a gun with a bear charging down at you and your dad, and your dad sat next to you sleeping. So he was there. He was in as much danger as you were in, and in his case, this really, he was in more danger, but he didn't experience it the way you did. And so that's the thing. I'm looking back on this, and this ERC is like, thank you. Yes, that was terrifying, scary, and crazy, and I did take pay cuts, and I did go with weeks without salary so that 
I could keep my business open, not just for me, but for the people I work that work for me and for our community. Like that's how we took it. We took it as a personal mission thing. And it did start with us saying, no, we're digging in. We're not going down. But it, we do know it had ripple effect. And so I feel like this ERC is that. It's that reward for that. Okay. So I urge you to reach out to your CPA or to Shannon and figure out what your share of the ERC is, if there is a share for you, because your business was affected by COVID. There were times that your goods and products and services products were on a dock and the dock was closed because of COVID and you couldn't deliver. So this industry qualifies. All right. I, I just, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, I, I, you know, every once in a while I get crazy pants up over stuff and you just got to understand it's because it's, it's that level that you have to pay attention to it. All right. So let's recap some of the things. Okay. If you stuck it out, if you kept employees on your payroll, if you came through this and you then you are entitled to it, right? It is not handout. It is not free money. It's a real tangible way to make up for what you put yourself on the line to. Because here's the thing, you put yourself on the line and might not have worked out. That's the thing. And so, you know what? We don't often get rewards for that. And so I'm glad that this is available. All right, now let's talk deadlines. Shannon walked me through some of this in a separate conversation. So I want to make sure that I re review it here. She says, the ERC doesn't have a specific deadline the way that it did for the PPP. So it's a little tricky to nail down. But Shannon says it does follow the normal amendment time for your 941S filings. Okay. That means that we each have a three year window of time from when the original 941 was due, which would be quarter two of the following year of COVID. Okay. So that means that the deadline to amend is going to be April 15th, 2024 for quarters two, three, and four of 2020. OK, so you have a year from now. And if you're listening in the future, we're airing this in March of 2023. But you have until April 15th of 2024. So get on the horn, OK, with your CPA or Shannon. OK, and I just want to say, don't ignore it. It is too important right? What a game changer. If you were to get a $30,000 refund on this, is that the difference between you having a bookkeeper full-time or part-time? If you were to get $60,000, is that the difference between you having a design, a design assistant in your firm? You know, I mean, like think about how this can impact your business. What if you got $150,000, right? So I just to say, Shannon, thank you so much. Thank you, Natasha. Natasha Jones for introducing me to Shannon and thank you to Sarah Brennan for nudging me again, you know, back in December. And, you know, I said Window Works did file and um, we are happily waiting for and expecting a good result. So thank you. Thank you for listening. I appreciate you. I hope you will. This is, you know me, I say take action all the time. This one thing, make a call today if you haven't already. All right. And if you have already, high five to you for being proactive. Yay on you. Decide to be excellent. Thank you for joining me today. This podcast is a production of Luann Nigara Inc. If you want to know more about me, my books, or Luann University, go to luannnigara.com. And if you are interested in having Window Works help you with your next window treatment or awning project in the New York, New Jersey metro area, go to windowworksnj.com to learn more. Have an excellent day.